Hi there. In this video, we will learn about a production function which is known as transcendental logarithmic production function. This is in addition to CES and VES production functions that we studied before. So before we delve deeper into it, I suggest that you subscribe to this channel if you haven't and you like the material if you really enjoyed it. And also, you click this bell icon so that you get updated whenever a new video is uploaded. As we can see, the title of the production function is transcendental logarithmic, and it is uh, converted into a portmanteau that is trans log. Both of the words they have been merged into it because transcendental is something which is beyond, and uh, it is beyond algebra because beyond algebra we have logarithms and we have trigonometric ratios. So this is why we call it transcendental logarithmic function. It is attributed to these two individuals and they presented uh, a more visible form of it in 1973 though there is uh, evidence that there was work on it in 1971 as well. So this is a more uh, concrete work which was done on the trans log production function and uh, if we try to understand the nature of it, it is basically a flexible production function because it is providing us linear as well as non-linear specification in it. It is also uh, a little bit uh, innovative because it has interaction effects of inputs as well. That is two terms, that is two input terms are involved in the form of a product in it. So their coexistence is also modeled. And then we have the flexibility of including multiple inputs. We can include more than two inputs with uh, quite a bit of ease. We can include three, four, five, six and so on inputs. Primarily we have a standard form in which we have two inputs that is labor and capital. And uh, it is natural logarithmic in its version as you can see. It is occurring before all of the variables. So uh, if we look at the first term, it is basically the natural log of the constant term which is representing the intercept and then we have linear specification and in that we have the natural log of the first input and of the second input and we also have the coefficients and then we have nonlinear uh, that is the quadratic specification of it uh, in nonlinear we are limiting our analysis to quadratic specification and in this we can see the square of the uh, natural log of the terms that is uh, labor and capital they also have their coefficients that is the ln and bkk finally the third visible part of this production function is actually the product of the two natural logarithms of the inputs and this is why it is known as the cross term or the interaction term because it considers the combination of the two when they coexist in the process of production because these uh, terms they are considering the effect of one of the inputs at a time and they are overlooking the effect of the other uh, variable at that point in time. That is, we are assuming the centrist variables while keeping labor constant, we are observing the effect of capital by considering the square of the labor natural logarithmic form constant, the effect of the square of the natural logarithmic form of capital. But here, the product is there, it means that they are coexisting and the effect on the output is measured once we consider that both of them are used together. Extending it to the three input case, we again have the first term which is the intercept and then we have the uh, same kind of terms but this time there are three in number. We have natural log of labor, natural log of capital and natural log of technology as well. This is the third input that we are considering and all three of these terms are specifying the linear form. Then we have the quadratic form in these three terms. You can see that we have natural log square, then natural log of capital square natural log of technology scale and definitely their coefficients they are also there for labor for capital and for technology this was the nonlinear quadratic specification part and finally the interaction terms they were there now we have the three possibilities when labor and capital are considered in a couple and when labor and technology are considered together and when capital and technology are considered to coexist they also have their parameters they are according in terms of their name that is labor capital, labor technology and capital technology. So we have this three input case here which is completed. 
Then there are a few assumptions that are meaningful from the economic point of view. For instance, if the coefficients of the labor and capital in their original forms, uh, in their linear specification, they are not in their original form in the trans log production function, they are in terms of their natural logarithmic form. So when the linear specification is considered and if their coefficients are summing up to 1, it means that we have constant returns to scale. If they are not equal to 1, then definitely we do not have constant returns to scale. We would have variable returns to scale, that is DRS, decreasing returns to scale and increasing returns to scale. So this is the economic side of the uh, sum of these two parameters. And then we have the symmetry condition. And that holds because the product is equal no matter we reverse the order. If labor and capital they appear in this way and then capital and labor appear in the form of a product, their coefficients will be the same because the value of this term will be equal to the value of that term. Which means that the series of values generated from this variable will be the same as this variable. So their coefficients will also be the same that is BLK should be equal to beta KL, beta LT should be equal to beta TL and beta KT should be equal to beta TK. You can see here that we have used natural log of labor and natural log of capital but we haven't used natural log of capital and natural log of labor in this in the reverse order. Here again labor and technology is appearing but technology and labor is not appearing. Again capital and technology are appearing but technology and capital are not appearing because the product will be the same and the values of the variable will be the same. So the coefficients will also be the same. So this is why the symmetry condition it holds. If we talk about how it is uh, production function or mathematically speaking function gets generated, the Taylor series expansion is working in the background of it. This is purely a mathematical concept and we need not discuss this in this economic side of translog production function. And definitely when we take this function into the graph, it is plotted in the logarithmic space because the variables, they are not in their actual form, they are in their natural logarithmic forms. So instead of log uh, labor, we will be writing natural log of labor. Instead of capital, we will be writing natural log of capital. So in this way, this uh, trans log production function can be understood and it can be modeled, it can be used for two, three or even more of the inputs. So I hope you have enjoyed this lecture. So you may like it if you have found it useful. In the upcoming lectures, we will learn more about the transcendental logarithmic production function. Thank you.